Well, I mean, one group of people who no doubt will be in need of using criminal barristers, but I'm sure can definitely afford to pay for their own because mummy and daddy will simply pay for it. And they'll get out of their Range Rovers from their lovely houses and so and pay for it because we know who those activists are, don't we? Yes, it's at the various activists, whether it's Just Stop Oil, Insulate Britain, Extinction Rebellion, or the latest ones over the weekend, Animal Rebellion. Those are the folk uh, who decided it was a great idea uh, to basically seize a whole load of milk in Fortnum and Mason in central London um, and then just throw it all over the lovely red carpet. Well, this was among a whole spate of different uh, um, protests over the weekend. There's all more than 100 people arrested by the Metropolitan Police. I would say not enough uh, after a weekend of protests by environmental groups, including damaging shops, uh, but also uh, bringing a, uh, Regent Street to a standstill and the rest of well, all of those uh, protests. Well, let's talk to one of them, a spokesman for Animal Rebellion. He's Robert Gordon. He took part in the Regent street march and even gave a speech at that uh, protest good morning to you robert good morning julia thank um, you for having me on well the show. thank you very much for coming on i mean, you, I mean your organization offered to come on after i tweeted about uh, the the activism in uh, oh again the illegal criminal damage caused by activists uh, in a fortnum and mason it's not a store for which i hold a particular candle i think it's all rather overpriced frankly but it's a, a store that's been in the news over bags of cash in fortnum mason bags for, uh, for for then prince charles um can you tell me what is the purpose what is going to be achieved by activists going into to a big posh shop in Piccadilly, picking up pints of milk and then throwing them all over the carpet. What, what was the message and what was the purpose of that? Because all I saw was spoilt brats having a tantrum and if they were my kids, they'd have been sent to their rooms. Well, we practice non-violent direct action. So this is a type of protest that we've seen through history that really works. For example, with the suffragettes and with the American civil rights movement. Um, and we, we do this action to make our demands very clear to the government. And we have two demands. And the first is that the government support farmers in a just transition to a plant-based future. And with the freed up land as a result of this transition, that the government support farmers again to rewild this land, to give it back to nature, to draw down carbon from the atmosphere and to restore our precious biodiversity in this country. So much to unpick there, Robert. I don't know where to start. First of all, as a woman, I'm really not impressed with you comparing yourself to the suffragettes. The reason why women uh, had to actually resort to some of these tactics, and indeed some cases violent protests, was because they didn't have the vote. Last time I looked, you've got a vote the same as I've got a vote. If you want to, and the civil rights movement, again, black people who didn't have equal rights, they didn't have the vote. If you want to uh, effect change, stand for election put your case to the people and then see how many people support you. Who are you to demand anything from a democratically elected government? Who the hell do you think you are? Well, I think you'll agree in many cases, Julia, that our government is woefully incompetent and that when we try to make our message clear through political channels, it doesn't always work. We've tried... No, 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 hold on a minute. When, when you say it doesn't work... Climate. No, 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 Robert, what do you mean it doesn't always work? So if, if you make a demand and the government doesn't listen, then you, then, then you can do anything you want. Or, or are you saying that actually if you do actually try and put your case, people don't agree with you because your view is incredibly minority view? No, I'm saying that the government are failing in their responsibility to people by failing to protect us from, you know, food insecurity, fuel poverty... People are going to die this winter because they're too cold, because they can't afford food. And that's not on. It's not on. Um, if we've got food insecurity, how does throwing away perfectly good pints of milk help that? So we're calling for a plant-based future, which we know will use significantly less farmland so we can produce far more food with far less resources, which will, in the long term, increase um, food security. That's not and actually that, true, asking, Robert. That's not actually factually true. to support farmers who are struggling the most, arguably. That's not actually true. It, it is actually... By people eating meat, people get a lot more calories, a lot more protein uh, from, from eating sort of smaller amounts of food. We are born with teeth that can go through meat for a reason. We are supposed to have a balanced diet. Um, I don't want to go, I don't want to live in a world where I have a meat-free diet, thank you very much. If you want to, go for it. I don't care what you eat, it's nothing to do with me. But neither is what I eat to anything to do with you. So who are you to demand that a democratically elected government gives in to your 
personal preferences. Who, wh who do you think you are? That's the bit I don't get. Well, to address your first point, Julia, it's a misconception that uh, meat has a small footprint because a significant amount of land goes into growing food to feed those it animals does, yeah. in the farms. Um, and that uses so much land. So we're asking for that land to be freed up in a plant-based future and rewilded. Um, and, and it's a very simple demand. It's a win-win for everyone, for the countryside. Apart from farm. people who want to eat meat. Well, thankfully, we have like some incredible technological advancements coming our way. Uh, such as in vitro meats, you know, mm -hmm. uh, lab-grown meats. And, uh, and when those and when those are meat. fully developed and they taste just as good, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I, like many other people, will move on to them. But unless or until this will be something that will happen naturally, you know, people will go, oh, you know, it's 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 cruel, cruelty free. It's probably going to be cheaper. It's it's you know uh, reliable to get a hold of, etc. That's fine. But but until that point. I want to know why you think that you demanding something should be treated as anything other than a, a childhood tantrum. I, I'm, that, that's the bit I don't understand. Did your parents ever say no to you? Well, I think, Julia, the, the point here is we're already at that stage where you can get affordable, sometimes even cheaper, especially in the case of plant milks, affordable, nutritious food that doesn't require significant amounts of land, significant amounts of animal farming. And as you said, the cruelty involved in that. We're a nation of animal lovers. It's unnecessary at this point. And under the current system, farmers are really struggling, and they have been for years. They're struggling the because they need to be paid more. Inadequate. And we agree there, 100%, Julia. But, so but you're, what you're doing isn't going to make farmers, farmers get paid more. Robert, did your parents ever say no to you? Well, these protests, Julia, they were inspired by farmers who took very similar action, taking milk off supermarket shelves and pouring it in the street. Um, in 2016 over um, arguments over the price. So, um, and we're, we're going out and we're talking to farmers as part of this movement and getting them on side. I'm sure dairy we farmers are thrilled with your behaviour. Robert, can you answer my question? It's a genuine question because one of the things yeah. that we do see with this sort of activism by, by you and, you, you know, whether it's Animal Rebellion, Insulate Britain, Extinction Rebellion, or everybody, it's exactly the same. It's a bunch of middle-class do-gooders telling everyone else how they should behave, having basically a sort of a public tantrum, telling everyone, I'm, I'm such a good person, aren't I good? And, and, and we're trying to save you all, and we're this insistence that the government does what you want. And, and an awful lot of people, as we saw with, say, with Regent Street, you know, they're trying to go about their daily business, make a living, and they can't get around, and the ordinary people who are working people are saying, Oh, look, I need this road to be clear. I, I need to be able to sell my goods and, and fly my trade. And you don't seem to care about them. This idea that m your middle class, basically privileged um, activists who, who, who don't really understand how most people live their lives, who haven't got a little trust fund and, and the like. I'm, I'm asking a genuine question. Did your parents ever say no to you or are you used to? When you demand something, do you always get your way? I can safely say that my parents raised me really well and that they did say no to me when it was necessary. When it was um, necessary. But unfortunately, we couldn't get one of our middle-class spokespeople to come today, so I'm calling you from a council estate in York. Oh, it's good to hear. Um, no Jocastas or Tristrams. And Steve, Steve, who you saw pouring the milk in Fortnum and Mason, you know, he's a dad. He's doing this because a he dad. cares about his kids, about everyone, about those workers, because we're in a really scary situation where... As I said, obviously, I think we have different views on the climate crisis and you disagree with the vast majority of scientists. I, but no, he has a no I don't. I just follow the science. He, he has a vision for a future where we give uh, nature back to wildlife and where we can have breathable air in a beautiful countryside with birds. We have a beautiful countryside. We have breathable air right now. And I hate to tell you that, that you know, when, when, when life was given over to the countryside, people lived till they, was about, they were about 30 years old because life was nasty, brutish and short. And our ability to control nature is what gives us the amazing, wonderful lives that we have right now. But hey-ho. Um, Robert, I'm glad to say your, 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 your parents brought you up well. But um, in this case, um, I, I do think the, the, the 
the, the government should be acting as parents and should be telling you all no and go to your rooms. But there we are. Really good to talk to you. Great to have you on the show. I hope you'll come back again. Robert Gordon is a spokesman for Animal Rebellion. Quick word from Ali Mirage about all of that. Well, I would I would have loved to ask Robert, you know, what, what will he do about wild animals in the wild? Who eat other animals? Oh, right? let's bring but the wolves presumably back. make them vegan. Yeah, exactly. Let's bring the right? wolves back. But, you know, for me, there's a red line with all this. I don't agree with this stuff. And you do not mess around with fruit-shaped marzipan or Piccadilly biscuits or marmalade <laughs> at an iconic shop like Fortnum Mason. We just don't go there. Have we finally crossed the line for you, Ali? You have. It's, all, it's overpriced, if you ask me. It is overpriced, but selectively. Talking is overpriced. He's not. He's under... <laughs> Jeremy Kyle is up next. Tell us...